QuickBooks Online 2024 Payroll Transactions Using Bank Feeds. Get ready some coffee and clear your mind because we don't overanalyze. We intuit with Intuit's QuickBooks Online 2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line now i'm not saying that subscribing to this channel crunching numbers with us will make you thin fit and healthy or anything however it does seem like it worked for her just saying so you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise so you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online bank feed practice file we set up in a prior presentation. Opening the major financial statement reports as done every time. The reports on the left-hand side. We're in the favorites. We're going to be right-clicking on that balance sheet. Open link in a new tab. Right-click on the P&L profit loss, otherwise known as the income statement. Open link in a new tab. Right-click it on the trusty TB, the trial balance. Open link in a new tab. If you don't have that trial balance in the favorites, you can search for it. Tab into the right. Close in the hamburger. And we'll change the range to the first two months of 2024. 01, 01, 24 tab, 02, 29, 24 tab. Selecting the drop down. We'd like to see months by months, side by side, run it. Then we'll tab to the right. Close the hamburger again. Change the range. 01, 01, 24 tab, 02, 29, 24 tab. Drop down for the months. Run it to refresh it. One more time with the trusty TB trial balance, the hamburger needs to be closed. Change the range, 010124 tab, 02924 tab, drop down months, run it to refresh it. Let's go back to the balance sheet and now think about the payroll process. So the payroll process, you have a lot of different options on how you're going to deal with the payroll. And then once you select or as you are selecting, you want to think about how the bank feeds can fit into the payroll process that you have set up. First thing to note, double entry accounting system, assets equal liabilities plus equity. This is a, a universal system. Uh, uh, it's not going to be subject to like location, but things that do affect the accounting are of course, you'll have different currencies depending on the location and you're gonna have laws that could have an impact on the accounting. Principally, the laws that make accounting more complex are tax laws. And so when we think about payroll, payroll should be a very easy transaction and possibly is an easy transaction in many parts of the world. But if you have payroll taxes that are intertwined in that and also oftentimes the government has uh, laws that are also kind of intertwined, then it's going to make uh, the payroll taxes a, a lot more complex. In the United States, these laws have gotten so complex that we have specialty fields around them, including just the reporting of the payroll because we have to have withholdings related to them for payroll taxes. And then there's human resources, which kind of touches in on payroll, but is also around all of the laws around you know employment. So I'm going to be looking at this from the standpoint of the United States. But if you have similar laws, the ta taxes are, are, there's nothing really new under the sun for taxes. It's just a question of where you are at and what kind of tax laws that location is basically putting in place. And then you can uh, you know, apply the tax that is relevant uh, to you. Okay, so that said, let's go to the first tab over here and just realize if I select the plus button, normally payroll should be as easy as any other kind of transaction that we could usually like just wait till it clears the bank and use the expense form as the payroll clears the bank to record 
payroll expense, right? So we would see the process. It should look like this. I just go to my dashboard over here and I've made an agreement with an employee. Let's change this to money out rule to pay them every week. And then they worked for a week and then I pay them. So if I paid them this 1,600, I should just be able to say decrease to the checking account. The other side goes to payroll uh, expense. That's a normal business expense, easy. However, of course, it's not that easy because we have in the United States payroll taxes on the federal level, as well as payroll taxes on the possibly on uh, the state level. And, and so that's gonna complicate things. And then we have reporting requirements on the payroll taxes that we have to deal with. And then again, the human resources might also touch into that. So it's very unlikely, you probably do not want to do payroll yourself basically by hand, not because any one tax is difficult to calculate, but because when you combine them all together, along with the reporting requirements, it becomes complex just because the amount of different things that you have to handle. So even if you're just doing limited payroll, a few people, you probably want some support to help you out with the payroll. How do you get the support? Well, QuickBooks, you can do payroll within QuickBooks, but you still have to pay more for it. So there's gonna be different tiers. You can look into your payroll options uh, to purchase payroll. If you went into the reports on, or the payroll on the left-hand side, then you have your payroll center. If you don't have payroll, then you could probably go in here and, and think about purchasing payroll and look into your options for purchasing payroll within QuickBooks. Your other option, which of course would still cost money, either way they cost money, probably be more expensive a little bit to have an outsourcing of payroll though. In other words, you hire someone else, the big ones being like an ADP or a Paychex to process the payroll outside of QuickBooks and then you import into QuickBooks just what you need. Those are kind of like your primary two options. I'm not advertising ADP, I'm just saying those that's one company that that does that. So let's get an idea about the payroll process. This is the QuickBooks desktop flowchart we're using for online purposes, just to think about the flow of the forms that will be impacted and then how bank feeds might fit into that. So we're on the payroll side. Now this is the time entry. You might not have to enter time into uh, QuickBooks if you're paying someone like on a salaried basis. If you're paying them on an hourly basis, you're gonna need some format for them to give you the number of hours. You could enter that into QuickBooks directly with the entering of the time, or you might just count it in other software or give you just you know a, a, a Word document or an Excel document to calculate that. Then we're gonna be processing payroll, actually delivering the checks or giving the electronic transfers of the checks. This is the decrease to the checking account, which you would imagine would come through on the bank feeds that we would be able to see. This will happen. How often will this happen? Well, it's up to you as you start the business. Are you gonna to choose to pay people? Normally it would be either weekly, semi-weekly or semi-monthly, every two, twice a month, or bi-weekly, two times a week which isn't exactly semi-monthly because each month has a different number of days in it. And then you could do it monthly. Those are the typical ways that you might uh, pay people. When you actually pay them, it's not just gonna be a decrease to the checking account and the other side going to payroll expense, however, because the United States forces the employer to be the tax collector for the employee and also assigns payroll taxes on the employer side not for their own wages, but for the wages of the employee. So that means that that you're going to have to take the money out of their paycheck. So they're going to give. So they're going to have their net check. You take money out, and you're not going to pay it usually directly to the government at the time you process the payroll, but instead put that into a liability account called payroll tax liability. To do that is like an accrual thing to do. So now we've deviated from a cash-based system. It's going to mess up our bank feeds because if I do this within QuickBooks, then I can't wait till something clears the bank because I have to deal with these withholdings. Now, so the withholdings are going to be Social Security, Medicare, federal income tax. Then you might have state income taxes that you also have to withhold. And you could have voluntary withholdings, things like a 401k or retirement plan and insurance, health insurance, and so on, 
that you might be dealing with on the withholding. We also have our taxes on the employer side that we have to deal with uh, as well. And then after we process the payroll, we're going to pay those payroll taxes, ours and the employees that we withheld to the government. Uh, and we'll have to do that. And then we have the payroll forms that we have to process in the United States, the federal forms being the 941, typically on a quarterly basis for the Social Security, Medicare, federal income tax for the employees, federal income tax, and then the 940 at the end of the year for FUTA, Federal Unemployment Tax Act, and then the, the W-3s and the W-2s at year end. Again, software is very useful to help with the processing of that. All of this information means that if you turn payroll on within QuickBooks, you're gonna get a lot more detail than you possibly need just to create the financial statements correctly because I need all this detail to then process the 940s, the 941s, the W2s, the W3, and the payroll stubs, which are also required every time we uh, make a payment to each employees. So. So that's going to be a lot of added reports that if you turn payroll on within QuickBooks, you're going to have all these other reports that are going to be included in a lot of detail. Again, more than you need just for the reporting of the financial statements. Uh, so if that was your process, then you would have to actually process payroll within QuickBooks and that would record the checks on our side, right? And then the checks would clear on the bank feeds and you would be using the bank feeds just to match out. You wouldn't actually be recording transactions with the bank feeds, just using it to help you with the reconciliation process. That's how you basically have to do it if you're processing payroll within QuickBooks. Your other option is to process payroll outside of QuickBooks with a payroll provider like an ADP or something like that. And then all you have to do is add into your system the information necessary to get the financial statements properly organized, as well as do the bank reconciliations. And you could do that on a payroll period by period basis, possibly on a monthly basis, possibly on a quarterly basis, or on a yearly basis, you know, if you so choose. So just to get an idea of this, let me show you like a very simplified uh, kind of report on how payroll works. And then you could, and this will help maybe to see how the bank feeds fit into it. So I'm going to go into Excel here and I'm going to make like a payroll register just so we can kind of get an idea of what is going on. I'm going to select the entire sheet, right click on it, format the cells. I'm going to go into currency, negative numbers bracketed, no dollar sign. I'll get rid of the decimals for the purposes of our practice problem to make it cleaner. Okay. And then, and so then I'm going to say, let's say that we have employee employee one and employee two or let's let's name them sam and uh sam and jane or whatever our our, our two employees and then i'm going to select those i'm going to make that a header by going to the home tab and font group and make that black and white and i'll center it home tab alignment and center and let's make this a little larger. I'm also going to select the whole thing, home tab, font group, and make it all bold. Okay, so let's let's imagine that we have earnings. Earnings. This is their wages, in other words, for uh, Sam 1,200 and Jane 2,500. That means we have a total between the two of them. Uh, I'll format paint this over here. If I sum this up equals the sum of these two. So the point I want to point out here is that if an external provider did the payroll, we might be able to think of it, all of our employees as though they were like kind of one employee because I really need to get the financial statements correct. And I might just be able to use the totals and not have all the other sub detail, which I don't need for financial reporting. However, we do need for the, the payroll tax reporting and whatnot, which will not be handled within QuickBooks if we have a third party provider to do it, right? That would be the idea. So then FIT is federal income tax, not for the company, but for the employees. We have to take their income tax out of their wages according to the W-4 form typically 
that they are going to be providing us. QuickBooks has a nice way to provide the W-4 form uh, within the system, which is nice. But in any case, I won't get into that. I'm just going to make up a number because it's not a flat tax. It's complicated because it based, it's based on what they tell us they we need to withhold. And so they're still trying to make an estimate based on their Form 1040 uh, income. So that's so so we're just going to do what we're told based on what they give us on the W-4. Let's say Jane had had negative 230. I'm just making these numbers up completely. Sum of these two. So that means we have total FIT federal income tax for the employees, not our federal income tax. We have to pay our federal income tax on the net income. But then we have social social security employee portion. Let's say that this is something that's more of a flat tax. So this would be negative of the earnings times 0 0.062. And that's going to be about $74. So that one is easy to calculate because it's more of a flat tax, although there's a cap on it. And so it, there's still some complexity to it. Let's do the same thing here. I can, I can say this is going to be this, their earnings times 0 0.062. So I, I can think of that as a total as if they were one employee. So I can say if all my employees were one employee, they had earnings of 3,700 FIT 410 Social Security for the employee portion 229 and then Medicare medic Medicare that's more of a flat tax although it's not perfectly flat again because there could be added taxes on it but let's generally it's going to be the gross times 0 0.0145 so this equals negative this times 0 0.0145 and this equals the sum of these two. And then let's say that's it. I'm, that's quite simplified because we could also have, you know, voluntary withholdings and state taxes we have to deal with. But these are the common federal taxes. This is employee. So that means if this was it, their net check. So I'm going to sum this up because we have negatives and positives. So it's going to be the sum of this which is basically the 1,200 minus the 180 minus the 74 minus the 17. I can copy that across doing the same for each of these items. So if we processed payroll through QuickBooks, then the calculation would be the 1,200 and then it would withhold these amounts, put them into a liability per employee. The net check would be at 928 which we would have to enter as we process the payroll, this is what we would see coming through the bank feeds. So it would come through the bank feeds uh, over here and we would simply just check it off as a match. It would say that it was matching because we already would have to process the payroll within the system uh, in order to do the payroll within QuickBooks. Now, if we did the payroll outside of QuickBooks with an ADP, it might be possible for us to treat all of our employees basically as one employee, saying this is as if they were one employee earning 3,700 minus the payroll taxes gets us to a net check of 3,007. It's a little bit tricky to deal with the payroll uh, in the bank feeds with that because there's actually two checks that will clear through the bank feeds, but we can match those two out and that would be like the easiest transaction to do. We'll see that in a second. But we also, let's also think about the employer side. So we have social security employer. That's what the ER stands for, which will basically match the social security here. And then, so this is what we are paying over and above what comes out of the, of the employee's checks. And then we have Medicare employer, which we're going to match. So I'll copy that across. And then I'm just going to say that's going to be the uh, total employer. I'll sum that up for these two. I will copy that across and I'll put an underline here. So these taxes that are pulled out here are taxes, but they're not our taxes. Those are the employee taxes. We're being forced to be the tax collector by the government. And so we're taking their money from them before they get it and and giving it to the government. These taxes are our taxes that are over and above what we agreed to pay the employees. 
that we're not paying on our income, but basically paying on the employee's income. So after this, the total liability, total uh, payroll tax liability, I know I'm not spelling all this correctly, I'm just gonna, is gonna be equal to the sum of these federal income tax, hold on a second, the sum of these federal income tax, social security and Medicare, plus our portion of social security and Medicare. We're gonna end up with a liability if we processed the payroll of these amounts, right? And this is just the same here. It's just a double check. So that's how much, if we process payroll, we would say they earned this amount. We took this from their paycheck and we owe on top of that, this amount. So the total payroll liability after processing payroll would be this uh, 976. So you can see that uh, this information would get quite detailed uh, even with a few employees because we have to report this on a paycheck by paycheck basis on a year to date basis as well as a paycheck by paycheck to each of the employees. So uh, if we didn't have to do all that internal reporting, we would eliminate a lot of detail within our QuickBooks system and just need the information to, to report the financial statements correctly so we can do our taxes and possibly external reporting. That's the difference of doing the payroll internally within QuickBooks or one difference and doing it externally with the help of a payroll provider like an ADP. Let's put some borders around this. And now I'm just gonna look at the payroll journal entry. I'm gonna do debits and credits just so you can kind of get an idea. If you don't understand debits and credits, that's okay. We'll just get an idea of what is happening here. So the earnings, it's gonna go into a payroll expense account. Payroll expense would be the total earnings. So they earned in total, if I think of them together, uh, this 3,007. And then we're gonna, we're gonna say that they had payroll liabilities, which would be a liability account, liabilities, liabilities, something like that, would be the negative sum of the FIT, Social Security and Medicare for both of them. If I'm thinking of them as one employee, I'm gonna make that actually a negative number. So I won't say negative sum, just sum. And then the net check or checks, the decrease to the checking account, let's say checking account would be the negative sum. This is the plug of these two. There's the 3007. So, so this, would, this is what we, if we took the payroll register and entered it as a journal entry, this is what, this is all we would need to do. We wouldn't need all the breakout of the detail, although this 3007 is going to be hitting the checking account and the actual checks that will hit the checking account will be individual checks, which will be the, the, the 928 and the 2079. So we will have to be doing a little bit of matching if we were to use that method to record. So let's just, and the other part of this would be the payroll tax expense, which would be equal to this, I'm going to make that a positive for debit. And then we're going to say, again, the payroll liabilities would be a negative of that. So this is our portion of the payroll taxes. Notice the payroll taxes really should not be including the, the employee's payroll taxes because that's included in the wages. Our payroll taxes are our portion of the taxes. So that means that the payroll liability for both will end up being after that, after we do that, that's, that's why we get to that 976, which is gonna be the liability that we'll then have to pay to the government for uh, the payroll taxes. That's gonna be the general idea. So if you had an external uh, ADP doing the paychecks, then you could take their payroll register on a pay period by pay period basis or monthly basis, quarterly basis or yearly basis, and then just do, uh, do this journal entry and that'll help you to basically reckon then, and then you'll see these amounts that will clear the bank feeds that you can basically reconcile. Or you can try to stay in a cash-based system. How could you stay in a cash-based system? 
Well, you could say, look, I'm just going to I'm just going to watch these clear the bank. And when these clear the bank, I'm just going to say that we have cash or, or we'll just put it into payroll expense. Payroll expense is just going to be for this one. It'll be both of these, right? It'll be one at a time. We'll have a payroll expense of that one and then a payroll expense of this check. And both of them are going to be going into, we'll put the other side into uh, cash. The checking account will be going down because we'll see those two transactions that will clear. Right. So that, so we'll just, that'll just be our normal transaction that will try to stay in a cash based system and, and record that. The problem with that, of course, is that we don't have the proper withholdings calculated at that uh, point in time. And I'm not breaking out the payroll expense versus the payroll taxes, but the payroll taxes will be paid later, also managed by ADP or whoever is doing our payroll. So we can then say, well, when the payroll tax is clear, again, I'm just going to record that to payroll expense. I'm not going to try to break out the taxes. I'm just going to say, then this cleared payroll expense, boom. And then the other side's going to be going to the checking account. So we'll see that money going out. It's just that there's going to be a timing difference when that money goes out. So, so if you, if you do this, then, then what's going to be the problem with that? Well, from a financial reporting perspective, the, the idea would be that ADP would be taking care of all of the, all of the 941s or whoever, I'm not trying to promote ADP, whoever's doing your payroll, but whoever you could, you could have them do the, do the reporting requirements and whatnot. And then we just use the bank feeds on a cash based system, just the easy way, right? We just record it, everything to payroll that's payroll related to payroll expense. And then possibly just at the end of the year, if we need this for tax purposes or possibly quarterly or monthly, if we need it for external reporting, we have ADP give this information to our tax preparer or CPA, and they then reconcile everything based on the reports provided by ADP, as well as the information we give the government, such as the tax returns for the 941s, the 940, the W-2, and the W-3. They just take that information and then properly do an adjustment at year end, which will break out from payroll expense, the payroll tax portion, and the and the payroll expense portion, if we need to do that, as well as record any payroll liabilities that should be on the books as of the cutoff of the end of the year, which you might have to do anyways, because oftentimes the payroll doesn't line up exactly with uh, the year end, right? Because if you're paying people every other week, then the pay period isn't gonna land on December. So oftentimes for external reporting, you still have to do an adjusting entry at the end of the year. So those are basically your methods with, with payroll, right? So, so your methods with payroll, do payroll internally, turning on QuickBooks to process payroll, which can help you to process all the forms, but will also add a lot of heavy weight into QuickBooks that is needed to process the payroll tax forms and is not necessary for the, just the creation of the financial statements for taxes and external reporting. Uh, in that case, again, you'll process the paychecks as they, as they happen first, and then you will just match them to the bank feeds as they clear the bank. Your other option is to get a third party provider like an ADP or a paychecks or something like that to handle the processing of the payroll and the, and the tax returns. In that case, you're going to see the checks clear the bank uh, and you can decide either to record the transactions into the system on a payroll by payroll period based on the reports provided to you or on a monthly period, a quarterly or yearly period, or you can try to just say, I'm going to stay in a cash based system, let ADP or paychecks handle all of the payroll uh, requirements and then just reconcile my books at the end of the year 
for tax purposes and and uh, external reporting purposes with the help use and coordination of the ADP payroll reports as well as the fi- as the, what we're giving to the government the W2s, the W3s, the 941s, which we provide to our CPA or tax preparer to make the adjusting entries to have everything tie out, which again, you might need to do anyways. And the point of this, basically at the end of the day, when we get to the to the to what's reported on the financial statements, for example, we should be able to reconcile exactly whatever is in payroll uh, expense and payroll taxes we should be able to reconcile to the reports we provide to the government, meaning we provide the government a 941, which is which is going to we do that quarterly for the federal income tax, Social Security and Medicare. And we provide them with a 940 federal unemployment tax and we provide them with a W3 form and the W2s, which is 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 going to be the, the tax information. So we should be able to reconcile what we have on our books to what we also gave to the government uh, because we're going to give them our books in the form of income taxes, our income taxes, not payroll taxes. So what it's on our books as expenses for for wages and payroll taxes should be able to be reconciled at least to what we also gave them on the payroll side of things in the form of 941s, 940W2s and W3s, which again, you can check for and you should check for if you're being diligent at the end of the year so that you're not subject to, to any kind of audit because if those things are wildly out of whack, they don't reconcile with each other, then that's going to clearly possibly raise questions. It could on the government side of things because now they have two things that should kind of match and they don't really match or they don't reconcile. So that's going to be some options for uh, the payroll. Sorry, that was a little bit abstract, but that's it.